Hello, I am Chance and we are here today with a brand new game that we are going to play. <laughs> it's called The Remainder. Let's get into it. All right, and before we begin, I also need to let you know that this story is a lot heavier seeming. So fair warning, it does include uh, subjects such as violence, death, suicide and mind altering substance abuse kind of stuff um so yeah just be wary if you're not into that thing then definitely skip this uh if you are let's let's do it let's get into it okay really quickly one more thing this game was recommended to me by lyra hypnos hopefully i said that correctly i think i did fingers crossed that i did Thank you so much for recommending it to me. It is pretty, pretty cool so far. If anyone else has uh, any games they would like to recommend, always feel free to leave a comment down below and recommend them. I can't 100% promise that I will uh, get them up on the channel, but I will definitely give them a look, uh, see what I can do and go from there. So as always, you guys, I appreciate you. Let's get into the game. All right, here we go. The Remainder by Zayhai Lu and Valentina Barrick. So yeah, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> this seems so incredibly awesome, yet dark and stuff at the same time. So I don't know, uh, I'm curious. Just this main title page right here has got me like, what are we getting into? Act one. Waves crash in the distance. Cicadas chirp, a breeze caresses our hair. The sun warms our skin. All is well. The artwork, you guys, the artwork. So I'm sorry, I'm already interrupting this. I'm probably going to be mentioning the artwork a lot in this. It's my aesthetic, so here we go. Anyways, a rug with an intricately weaved sigil is spread upon the cool grass. And we're singing the runes in unison, hands interlinked, moisture between the fingers, their taste lingers in my mouth. My chest vibrates, resonating with their voice. I can feel the air in our bodies move as one. I close my eyes and wonder, where does my body end and theirs begin? The sigil hums with power as our voices flow together. The energy fills me, making my blood rush. My dream is coming true, just a little longer, I smile. All is well. Is it? Their singing falters, I peer at them, inquisitive. Why did you stop? Is everything well? They grin sheepishly, but an edge lurks in the question. Huh? What has gotten into you? Why are you forgetting? Their smile is, is as gentle as ever, worryingly gentle. You are being strange. They gesture at the sky, stretching out a hand. I look up. The sun is ducked behind a cloud. Drops of wetness fall, softly patting the ground. You don't even know what you forgot, do you? Oh no. I frown, still peering up. What do you mean? Coward. Their voice is quiet, as if from far away. When I lower my gaze, they're not there. What the heck? Confused, I stand up and search around me. They're gone. Where did you go? It's pouring now. The cicadas are silent. Wind rips at my clothes. I look at my hands. Thick, warm, red. A sweet scent fills my nostrils. I venture a lick. Metallic. Greasy. What in Lura's name is happening? Darkness falls. Soon, I can barely make out the silhouette of my hands. With panic in my throat, I run to the tower and push open the doors, shouting, Where are you? Ooh, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> it's 
empty, silent hall stretch before me, echoing my question. It's like getting dark too in my room. <laughs> In the far end, a figure is walking away into the dark recesses of the hall. Hey, wait! Shouting, I run after them, feet pounding upon the sticky wet stones, echoing loudly. Squelch, squelch. Please, wait! I'm sorry! I want to call their name, but... No. No, no. There was a name. Why can't I remember? Because it's easier that way. What? No! You are always a coward. The voice chuckles. My, my. Look at you now. I ignore it and keep running. Sink the name. I'll know them when I find them. I throw a door open. Nothing. Another door. Nothing. Irritating. It better be important if I'm going through all this trouble for it. Next room, nothing. The infuriating voices, pointedly quiet. Shut up! I didn't say anything. You were thinking about it! My voice echoes back as I stand in an empty room. Hot breaths rasp in my throat. Why was I running so hard? Why do I care? Was it that important? I'm so tired. It's alright. Everything is fine. Whatever it was, it doesn't matter. Oh, no, 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 no. My eyelids are heavy. Comforting num numbness envelops me. I close my eyes and lie on the floor just for a moment. Everything's fine. No, it's not. It's not fine. The sea in every direction endless. A diamond dusting of moonlight across the surface above me. I look down into the depth, a pressure against my chest as the darkness stirs. A star. Then two. Then a constellation glitters into life they approach. The darkness was not the bottomless sea, but the body of an enormous fish, its silhouette filling my entire view. No, we don't do big scary fishes here. We don't. We don't. We don't. A gaping mouth splits open from horizon to horizon, a deeper black within, approaching, buzzing. The progenitor hag, Shrothril, comes for me. I should be afraid. Her mouth, now all-encompassing, blots out the last remainder of feeble illumination around me. I should be afraid. Why am I not? The mouth shuts with a distant clang, a flash of light across the eyelid sky. Ay waka. Wa ah. Come on, wake up. Prickling light in the comforting darkness, a rumbling rises and falls in an anti music rhythm. Calm coolness gives way to crushing heat. A blanket of boulders I'm wearing. Hey, you alright? Do you hear me? My eyes struggle open to a face. Ugh, no, go away. Someone grips my shoulders and squeezes. Still a bit out of it, eh? <laughs> the music is good. The metallic and greasy buzzing sound crescendos and my mouth tastes of iron. A hand is laid upon my forehead. I open my eyes again. It's easier this time. But the rest of my body is still heavy as stones. I can't budge a hair. Hmm, feverish. But no obvious wounds. You'll be fine, I dare say. Their brow furrows deeper. Stay still and listen to me carefully. Your spell had gone very, very wrong. It's going to kill us, and I haven't got much time to fix it. What? After a pause. They pat my hand, as if an afterthought. What are you talking about? What spell? I work my stiff tongue. Don't worry about that. Just rest here. I'll deal with it. It'll be no more than a tease time. What? 
the heck? They turn and stride off, not waiting for my reply. Hey, wait, what's hap- I break off into a fit of coughing. A hoarseness burns my throat. I peer around, trying to get a hold of my surroundings. I must be dizzy still. Everything's spinning. Why are the books flying? I squeeze my eyes shut. This is not happening. I'll wake up soon. Y'all! Sounds trickle in. Rustling. Clinking. A storm raging outside. A guttural buzzing. How can I sleep like this? Annoyed, I drag myself sluggishly to my feet. An urge to gag rises, rubbing my throbbing temples, tasting a foulness in my mouth. I force down the bile. What did I do last night? <laughs> the incessant buzzing. I rub my eyes again to clear them and look for the source of the sound. As I catch the sight of it, a cold terror creeps up my spine. A pulsing, writhing mass is suspended in the air. Eight tendrils, a gaping mouth, rings of chittering teeth glaring at me. Nope. 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 Waves of moist, brilliant heat spew from it. The transparency, the symmetry, the stench, the singing. Breath catching in my throat, I freeze. When it doesn't lunge at me, nor do anything but hover and pulsate, I manage to breathe again. What in Lura's name is that? Shapes huddle beneath the grotesque thing in the air. As I step around to get a better look, they resolve into figures. Midnight silent and still as bones. The white-haired person who woke me moments stand over someone robed in blue-gray curled up on the polished stone floor. Their face, a mask of anguish. The emblem of a high magus hangs around their neck. The image of a black snake-like creature coils around their arm. Why do I know these symbols? White hair's hands are raised in a peculiar gesture towards the tentacled atrocity looming overhead. Hey, I whimper. What are you doing? What is that thing? They don't show the slightest hint of having heard me. Hello? I ask again. No movement. I bump into something and look down to see a low couch. Beside it, there's a table of which cups lay around like drunkards. Inkwell, quills, and crumpled papers are strewn across the table and the stones beneath. A few bottles are still dripping from the mouths. Dark red spots splatter across the floor, covering stone and paper alike. A crash from somewhere else in the cavernous chamber pierces the silence, jolting me. A wave of adrenaline hits me. I duck behind the couch. There comes a bang. Sound of glass shattering, bursts of voices. A cacophony reverberates painfully from the walls around me. I clutch my ears. Is that shouting? Are there other people here? Please, let me wake up already. This is not funny anymore. As abruptly as they came, the sounds die down. Is it over? Clamping eyes shut, I try to block out the buzzing, praying. Let this be over soon. Let this be over soon. Let this... How did you get here? I nearly jump at the voice. The white-haired person is back. Slumped next to the couch, head lulled, a hand to their shoulder, breath shallow. Something glistening drips from them, but flickers and vanishes when it hits the floor. What? Um, I walked? You're wounded. What happened? Did someone attack you? They try to speak, but wince instead. Eyes closed, throat bobbing. Spitting out something black and then rusting their head back, they flash a sly grin and whisper. You should see the other. Violent coughing erupt interrupts them. Some fluid drips down and evaporates as it hits the floor. Sink me. Ruined my moment. 
<laughs> I like them. I suppress a scowl. I see. Maybe you can take that moment of yours and tell me what is going on here. What does it look like? I glance around the room with intense displeasure, taking care to avoid the floating thing. Like the end of the world? Another wince. They lift a finger and point. What about that? Do you recognize it? I realize they mean the thing with tentacles and avert my eyes. No. Davis, no. Absolutely not. Should I? I can't resist a shudder. It's interesting. So it appears like we know, I'm assuming, deities of some kind because we keep saying Lura and now Devas. Devas? Um which I'm assuming maybe means gods, maybe. Um, but like, we don't know anything else. Like what's happening? How do we not know what's happening? What do we do? Is this the person that was in the beginning? I'm voicing them like it is, but I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> they grimace. Sink me, not even that? Your handiwork? Excuse me? You heard me. That thing's here because of you. The Abyss Devara, a door to the last place you'd ever want to be, make no mistake. Their eyes widen with fear and their mouth curls in disgust. Curiosity rising, I push myself upright and study the scene again. I don't believe you. The unmoving figures catch my sight. What about those people? They seem more like the ones responsible to me. They gesture at the figure on the floor. Exactly right. That's the culprit. A great magus, farseer, savior of Daran Square, prodigy of the age, so on and so forth. You know the name too. Your name. Are they all me? Are they all me? Is that all me? Me? They're looking directly at me now. You remember your own name, don't you? <gasps> oh god, what's my name? What's my name? What's my name? I actually have a character that kind of fits <laughs> into this kind of aesthetic. Do I want to just insert his name in there right now? Danry? 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 Let's do it with an I. Why not? So it's a little different. Danry? You like that? The words tickle at the inside of my head. Magus Danry. They say weakly. Not to slight a dire situation, but it is somewhat amusing to see yourself like this. No. My brows tighten. What? Amusing? No. I mean, hold on. How could that be me? I'm here. Am I not? The person falls quiet for a moment, then tilts their head limply toward an ornate mirror meandering through the air nearby. Go see yourself. Take another good look at the figure on the ground, I step to the mirror and pull off its velvet cover. Ooh, show me how I look? I would rather keep it vague. <gasps> I don't know how I look. Show me how I look. <gasps> Ooh, I am fire! I am hot fire. Yep, it's the uh, it's like a it's like an eel. So like waves and stuff like that, ocean. So and like that fish. Oh, so this is this is all. Oh, okay, cool, 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 cool. Again, love the art. Holy crap. Okay, is this me? All right, is this me? Yes. Is this me? What I see leaves me stunned. The figure in the mirror, with their eyes wide and gaping mouth, is the spitting image of the one on the floor. I touch small pieces of metal embedded in my skin. Huh. I haven't noticed these before. Turning around to check, I see that even they are identical with the other person's. Could it be true? But how? How am I in two places at once? I turn to the figure next to me. How do you know me? You said my name, and you seem somehow familiar, but why don't I know you? 
What happened to me? My voice quivers. Tell me. They laugh soundlessly. You don't remember my name either? Oh, we get to name this person? Your... <gasps> What's a gender neutral name? We're gonna name we're gonna name them August. I don't know. I, I searched through Google and I found it and I really really like it. So that's who they are. They're August. Another fit of coughing. Not even close. You must have hit your head quite severely. Oh, I looked it up and it's not even their name. Oh yes. <laughs> that's good. Oh, that's so good. Sorry. Oh my god. All right, here we go. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna reel it back in. Not even close. You must have hit your head quite severely. Worried, I run a hand over my scalp. There aren't any holes. I don't remember hitting it. Hmm. How shall I say this? Eyes closed and lips parted. Their voice is barely a whisper now. The name's Alar. Your partner. Oh. Don't know what you did? Found you like this. They push out the words with effort. I lean closer to listen. A ritual must have gone astray and set loose the abyss Devara, stripping away your memories. I did what I could. You'd be gone otherwise. They're silent for a long stretch. I nudge them. Are you still with me? They open their eyes again and struggle to lift a hand and point toward the other side of the room, but it flops to the floor. Sink me. They're getting so quiet, I have to put my ear next to their mouth to hear them. Warm breath tickles me. Blood rushes in my ears. It's really cool, like all of these like ocean motifs, like I can hear it in the music a little bit, but the sink me thing too, like this is all... So, just little things that I'm, that I'm noticing. Your desk. Look in your journal. Find the spell. Circular gate. Black powder. Mantra. Repeat. Only way to save. No time. Go quick. They slump to the floor. Holding my breath, I wait. Heartbeat like a hammer in my skull. Thump. Thump. The buzzing fills the would-be silence in between. Resonance of, in, yeah, in between. Resonance of torment. I drive a thumb into my temple, crushing one pain with another. A futile effort. Hey, are you alive? I reach a hand to their shoulder. My hand passes through them. I pull away in shock and watch open mouth as Alar's body melts into sticky, transparent strands. A few breaths later, they're no more than a shimmering puddle. Is it going to make me cry? <laughs> I jump back, lose my balance and land on my butt, a scream starting. I throw my hands over my mouth and clamp tight, hoping that I wasn't loud enough to draw attention staring at the spot where Alar had been. By the depth. I relax my hands and mutter once, my heart slowed down to a less painful pace. Realizing that a few glowing strands still cling to my fingers, I shake them off in a panic. My skin crawls. Devarna, what do I do now? Find and cast a spell? Are they mad? I, I, I don't even know what a spell is and how were they killed? Could this place be dangerous? Davis, what do I do? Oh my god. Investigate my surroundings. Search the rest of the room for the desk and journal. Go for the door. Um, we are going to listen to what Alar said. And we're going to search the rest of the room for the desk and journal. Heart pumping, I spring to my feet. 
There was no desk nearby. Where could it be? Now that my head is clearing up, I can finally see more than a few meters in front of me. The place is a disaster. It looks like half a library's contents are caught in an unseen maelstrom. Books, parchments, translucent blobs, and cryptid skulls swim like fish through the air. Beyond this layer of mess, there are even bookshelves meandering in the periphery. I dodge under floating chairs, faces, paintings, and veritable uh, mazes. Oh god, this is making me dizzy. A lamp bumps into my leg, stretching it into shimmering, transparent strings. Before I can react, it snaps back into place, wobbling. I feel a red-hot needle slowly being pushed through my thigh. No! I cry out, dropping to my knees, but in a blink, the feeling's gone, as if it never was. Oh man, I'm, I'm like I'm like having recollection or something from whatever I did last night. <laughs> Noticing that my leg still works, I hurry out of the field of debris, not daring to come near anything. I catch sight of an enormous desk at the far end of the room. Seeing no more obstacles, I ease my panic breath and walk over to it, fervently hoping that the journal will be there. There we go, let's clear this up. What a disgrace. Save for a heavy book squarely set in the center, aligned with the edges. Everything else? Papers, scrolls, measuring tools, writing instruments, all are scattered around about carelessly. I file a mental note to put it in order when this is all finished. Observing the book, I notice they precisely spaced stitch marks along the spine, evenly placed rivets, meticulously inscribed, danry in leather. My jittery breath steadies, my hand clears somewhat. This must be the journal. If I can find the spell soon, there's still a chance I can save myself. And hopefully save Alar! I flip open some pages at random. Hello there. You're my journal, then. Will you help me make sense of all this? That's cute. The paper is smooth and firm under my fingers. A thick aroma enters my nose. So familiar. I close my eyes and inhale deeply. Memories tickle the back of my head. When I open my eyes again, the arcane symbols seem to regard me even as I look at them. Like seeing an old friend, written words, soldiers of intellect, Regiments arraying on a planar battlefield, written in a decisive hand. Mine. I love these symbols too. Geometric diagrams, sigils, maps of heart and spirit, beyond words, ordered beauty. It must take days, perhaps weeks to draw each. But what is time to acts of chaos, defiance? A row of strings hanging from the bottom of the book, each with an ornamental coin tied at the end. Bookmarks, perhaps. So many of them. By the depth, it's huge, an encyclopedia. How will I ever find one spell in this? A scratching sound comes from somewhere to my left. I tense up for a moment. Is it some debris, or... I wait. Another scratch. Then another. Something sharp against wood. I swallow, heart pounding. Could it be whatever Alar was dealing with? What do I do? The scratching keeps coming in twos and threes from the same distance, now I realize. If they wanted to harm me, I'd be harmed already. Now be brave and look. I'm scared. <laughs> I carefully tilt my head. There's an arched doorway fitted with a thick drift oak frame. The door is partially ajar. Dense blackness lies beyond it. I can't see anything moving. I peer into the dark opening. An amber glint flashes. Another scratch. Squinting, I take a tentative step forward. Is that a- Wow, so yeah. 
<laughs> that was a thing. I really, 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 really enjoyed it. I hope you did too. It's definitely a lot darker than the uh, Our Lives series, but I think these two give each other pretty good contrast. And um, yeah, wow. So let me know down below if you uh, enjoyed this at all. I mean, super cool, super, super cool. I don't know. If you did enjoy it, give me one of those big old thumbs ups. And uh, if you want to keep seeing more of of these of these things, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Bye.